It was 4.30 p.m. on March 18, 1944, when the last eruption of Mount Vesuvius began. The presence of American and British troops who had arrived in Naples after the city had been liberated from Nazi occupation meant that the event could be documented with photos and videos. It was the first time in history that this could happen for this volcano, but it is thanks to a particular man who goes by the name of Giuseppe Imbo that we have a description of the different phases of the eruption, a work of enormous scientific importance. Giuseppe Imbo was the director of the Vesuvius Observatory and, placing his own life at risk, he continued to record the activities of Mount Vesuvius, thus providing us with invaluable information for the study and understanding of volcanic phenomena. Ciao ragazzi, this video was written and filmed in Italian by our team of scientists, storytellers and video makers, manually translated into English but, but, dubbed with artificial intelligence. Long live culture and let's go back to the video. Today, the scientific community agrees that the eruption of 1944 was, in all respects, a continuation of that of 1906. The one in 1906 was a rather strong eruption, a VEI-4, VI is an index of volcanic explosivity. It caused 216 deaths and the displacement of 34,000 people and created a slag cone on the volcano's summit which was about 100 meters tall in 1944. But even during the most violent phases, Giuseppe Imbo never abandoned the observatory. His research was very meticulous and was hindered several times by the war, especially in 1944, when the Allies requisitioned part of the observatory, limiting his office to a single room with few instruments. Despite this, through his research, Imbo reached the conclusion that a new eruption was imminent. However, his warnings were only heeded when it was already too late. So here's the story of the phases of the eruption. The effusive phase, the first phase, began on March 18th with an explosion that partially destroyed the slag cone at the summit. Then weak strombolian activity started, characterized by lava flows directed towards the north, south and west, as you can see in these images. On March 19th the next day, these flows reached speeds ranging from 50 to 300 meters per hour. Careful, not kilometers per hour, but meters per hour. This was dangerously close to the towns of San Sebastiano and Massa. Parts of these two towns will be covered by lava two days later. Fortunately, the Allied army managed to handle the evacuation in time, allowing the departure of about 7,000 residents. The lava fountain phase. The second phase began on March 21st, three days after the start and was characterized by the presence of lava fountains of up to 800,000 meters high. In total, there were eight of them, the last of which lasted a whopping five hours. These contributed to the releasing of large amounts of ash into the atmosphere, which was carried by the wind towards the southeast and deposited on the ground in a layer which was several tens of centimeters thick. The finer ash, on the other hand, managed to reach a distance of about 400 kilometers from Vesuvius. The mixed eruption phase. The afternoon of March 22nd marked the beginning of the third eruption phase, during which the lava fountains were replaced by explosions of moderate intensity and the launching of volcanic bombs and lapilli. A column of gas and ash formed, reaching a height of over five kilometers, depositing ash and debris southeast of the volcano. Actually, recent studies have hypothesized that the column was about 10 kilometers high, but due to the presence of clouds, its height was underestimated at the time. There were then partial collapses of this column, which gave rise to pyroclastic flows along the sides of the cone. During this third phase, there were 23 victims, mainly due to the collapse of roofs under the weight of ash. The explosive seismic phase. At 12 o'clock on March 23rd, the fourth and final phase began, during which explosive activities occurred due to the entry of water into the volcanic conduit, with eruption columns reaching almost two kilometers in height. During that time, there was intense seismic activity and small pyroclastic flows on the volcano's summit. Eruption activity began to decrease starting from March 24th and officially concluded on the 29th of the same month, 
After this eruption, Mount Vesuvius went from being an open conduit volcano to a volcano with a blocked conduit, which is the same situation it is in today. The post-eruption phase. Overall, in the 10 days that we have just told you about, more than 245 million cubic meters of material were emitted and several towns were damaged by the fallout of ash and lapilli, such as Pompeii, Nozera, Scafati and Poggio Marino. According to estimates by the Allied military government, on March 26th alone, 21 people died due to the collapse of house roofs. Fortunately, Naples, a much more populated city, did not suffer major damage since the wind pushed most of the ash and lapilli towards the southeast. As reported in an article by Professor Claudio Scarpati, a volcanologist at the University of Naples, who was also my professor when I was a student, it is interesting that at the time this was considered a relatively small eruption. This is not so much related to the actual power of the event itself as it is to the global conflict that was currently in progress. The few dozen victims of the volcano and the destruction of farmland seem to be a relatively small amount of damage when compared to the horrific conditions brought on by a war, by that war in particular. With this in mind, I have to say, the volcanologist Giuseppe Imbo's work becomes even more important. He managed to collect a huge amount of data, data that was not only useful in the story that you've just heard, but data that will be fundamental for the at least partial prevention of future damage if Mount Vesuvius erupts. Friends, Thanks for watching us once again today. Greetings to you all and I'll see you in the next video, always here on Geopop Everyday Science. Ciao!